Qualcomm. I mean, <laughs> just crushed it. Just absolutely crushed it. And man, I, I got a big smile on my face just because I love to see it. I mean, if you remember a few years ago, Qualcomm being on the ropes, right? They're going to be, you know, Apple's not paying their bills. They're being sued by six of the largest antitrust groups on the planet. Uh, a hostile takeover from Broadcom. Did I miss something? <laughs> Leia, I mean, it's just, it just nuts. So here we are. Uh, Qualcomm knocked the freaking cover uh, off the ball. Beat 30, beat on the top plus 37%, beat on the bottom, 54%, uh, insane, record audio, auto and record IoT, increase the auto pipeline by $3 billion to $19 billion that is larger than most technology companies uh, out there. Revised guidance down, but 24% uh, improvement in EPS with all that macro uncertainty uh, uh, put in there and the market pays all that success back by dropping their stock, uh, which is just really, really sad. Net net premium Android uh, is uh, strategy is winning, right? Even handsets were up what 59% um, diversification play with two record revenue uh, uh, quarters inside of auto uh, and an IoT. And let me finalize with Samsung, right? That, the, the, the Samsung deal should have been a, uh, an absolute keystone for them, but I do understand that the institutional investors don't know how to change or revise their spreadsheet for a lot of the lack of information that, that publicly came out of that. But the great part is, as industry analyst, Daniel, we can take the shot. And so here's my interpretation of the deals. First of all, deal what two deals. First one was an IP deal, seven year IP 3G to 6G. Okay, so ending in 2030, 6G hasn't even been ratified yet. Vote of confidence. Snap, and the second one, Snapdragon. Snapdragon premium everywhere at, uh, uh, at Samsung in products that have never seen it before, like PC, like tablet, XR, wearables, and hearables. So that plus 100% of Galaxy S phones, if they execute, which is up from 75%, a little bit of unknown about Galaxy A. Is Galaxy A premium? So. Qualcomm has been in the Galaxy A, but they're not in it right now. It's, it's Exynos, and for a while, MediaTek was in there. So we don't know. We're going to have to see. Net-net, institutional investors didn't know how to fill in their spreadsheets on the deal. Well, so you hit a lot of it, and I'm just going to reiterate it. I mean, look, just a very, very good result. Even the revision down, resetting, still shows strong yeah. growth. Uh, you saw the automotive pipeline bump to $19 billion. This company's just on win streak after win streak, and its whole modular approach to building the uh, automobile of the future is definitely paying dividends. You're seeing the IoT business remain strong. There's a company now that has all four of its businesses are over a billion a year. Um, three of its four businesses now, not including licensing, by the way, are over, and this is just in the QCT side, are well over a billion a year. And the handset business, which I know Cristiano wants to – Prove diversification, and he has. Uh, but at the same time, it's been so successful that it keeps running away. This was a fifty-nine percent growth <laughs> quarter, um, and, and where Qualcomm is really crushing it is at the top end, at the premium tier. There's just no question, and that also has a lot to do with why the margin keeps uh, and it, it keeps growing too. Is you know when you can sell at the high end, uh, that tends to always be a really really great way to press your margins. That lower end stuff is great for volume and revenue but not necessarily great for the bottom line. Um, the Samsung partnership was great. Um, you know, it, I see a great opportunity for it to push its ambitions in, you said, hairballs, wearables, and then, of course, that connected PC business, yeah. which is something that we know um, is an opportunity right now for Qualcomm in particular, especially with all the things we just talked about on our last topic of, you know, I guess, I guess probably not a great thing for Intel to have another strong competitor entering the fray, but with mobile devices becoming more ubiquitous, 
from PC to handset, Qualcomm knows something about the, the handset and that part of our lives and, and maybe has something good to offer there. And we'll see if that becomes a bigger, more robust part of the business. So basically the long and short pat is the diversification strategy is working. The fact that Qualcomm basically taps into revenue on every single mobile handset on the planet that gets sold uh, is not a bad deal for the company. That licensing business didn't grow a lot, but it's just steady Eddie. And the fact that all the regulators for the moment are off the back has been a really good thing for the company to focus on growth, diversification, uh, margin expansion, revenue expansion, and of course, execution, which there's really very little to complain about here 